Today we are looking at the Palmer Pocket Amp Mark II. Palmer is best known for their load boxes and passive DI boxes with speaker simulation. Joe Bonamassa swears by them for his lifetime. He even has his own signature DI box with Palmer. The Pocket Amp itself is also sort of a DI box for guitar with added amp simulation. It's completely analog, there's no digital modeling going on here. Some eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted the somewhat familiar control layout. It looks a lot like the Tech 21 Sans Amp GT2. Well, that's basically what it is. I'm not going to say it's a clone, but it's a clone. It does the exact same thing at way less than half the price. Some say it's even better than the Sans Amp. The Pocket Amp sells for around 90 euros and the GT2 is still sold for over 250, although it is a pretty old unit by now. If you want to buy one, don't get it confused with the Mark I, which has a dark grey faceplate as opposed to the Mark II's black one. The Mark I is still sold for around 70 euros. Let's take a look at the inputs and outputs. At the bottom we have the guitar input, at the top we have the unbalanced emulated out, which you can feed into your active monitors or the effect return of an amp. Then there's balanced emulated XLR out. This could uh, go directly to front of a house or your recording interface. Then we have an aux in for MP3 playback and the 9V DC jack. It also runs on batteries. The battery is on the back and is raised slightly which could cause problems when using Velcro on your board. On the front we also have an emulated headphone out which makes the pocket amp a great option for silent practicing or travel. Just throw it in your gig bag and you have a complete setup to practice. As far as controls go, we have the universal gain, volume, travel and bass. Next is a selector for the amp model, so you can choose between vintage, British and US. You can read this as Fender, Clean, Marshall Crunch and Mesa High Gain. It's important to say that Palmer are not trying to simulate the exact tone of one particular amp, let's say a JCM at Henrod or Dual Rectifier. It's just a ballpark of an amp they are going for. Next is the mode switch. This basically lets you switch between three gain stages, clean, crunch and heavy. Setting it to clean on the US model is still pretty gainy. On the other hand, heavy on the vintage setting is slightly crunchy. You get the idea. Next we have the microphone position switch, which lets you switch with the mic um, position between classic, center and off axis. Last is the ground lift switch, which is the only control that the Sans M does not have. This comes in handy should you have a problem with noise or hum due to ground loop. For the sound demo I'm playing my Gibson Les Paul traditional with 1959 tribute humbuckers.
if a simple graphic EQ can get uh, rid of the nasty high end, especially on the high gain sounds. 